Hi everyone, in this video let's talk about Laravel form request. First let me show you how we normally validate an incoming request inside a controller. So inside my controller I have a store and an update method. And we are accepting the request as the first parameter. So there are two ways to validate a request. The first way is to use validate method on the request. We pass in an array of validation rules and the request gets validated and in case there is any validation rule failure, it automatically throws the exception and redirects us back to the previous page with the error messages. So the way that I am showing you here. The second way is using the validator make method. So we do validator equals validator make and we pass in argument. The first one is the data or the attributes from the request. The second one is the rules. So let's copy paste these. The third argument is the custom messages array. So in case if we want to override the failure message for any attribute, we can do that here. So let's say a name dot require and we want the message to be name is required. So the fourth argument is the custom attributes. So in case if we want to change the name of our attribute in the request, we can do that by passing it in here. And now if the validator fails, we do if validator fails, then we redirect the user back with the error messages. So these are the normal two ways we use and both are fine and works. Now the question is why should we even use form requests when we can validate inside our controller? The reason is that a controller is basically responsible for only connecting the model with the view or data with the view. And if we look at the first rule of solid principle, single responsibility, it states a class or method should have only one responsibility and validating the request in the controller violates it. So the solution provided by Laravel is using form requests. In order to create a form request, you run the following command. Let's open the terminal and run the command php artisan make request and then the name of the request. So let's say we are creating this request for a user, so we will name it user request. Now it's up to you whether you want to create different form requests for the storing and editing purpose. But in most cases you only generate different requests if there is a difference in the attributes otherwise you are good to go with the same form request. So I'm going to name it user request. What this command will do is it will create a new directory in the HTTP folder called requests and inside we can see our newly created request. So now that we have created a form request, let's replace the basic request from our controller methods. For that, let's just replace this request with user request and same goes for the update method. Now we can get rid of the validation from the controller and let's get rid of this. I'm going to need the rules, so I'm just going to copy that and remove the validation as well. And now we can get back the validated request attributes using the method validated. So it will return all the attributes that are validated now. So now let's open up the request and see what is inside of it and how to customize it. Inside we have two methods, authorize and rules. And of course you can guess what these methods do. The authorized method is responsible to determine whether the authenticated user can perform this action or not. So you can simply do like auth user and let's say there is a column called is admin. So that defines if the current authenticated user is admin or a normal user. So if the user is admin then he is authorized to perform this action. The rules method on the other hand is basically where you validate your request attributes and you add the validation rules. So I did copy from my controller, let's add the validation rules here. 
Now this is what you get out of the box when generating a form request. But there are other things that you can also do inside here. And let me show you a few of them. If you want your request to stop after the first validation error, you can specify a property which is called stop on first failure and set it to true. So by default a complete request is validated and then you see all the error messages in the response. Now if we specify the attribute here, this way you are restricting the request to stop after the first error has been found. You can also override the default redirect. So let's say on an error you want the user to be redirected to the dashboard with an error message instead of the intended redirect. You can do this by either specifying a redirect property or redirect route property. A redirect property takes in the URI whereas the redirect route property takes in the route name. If you want to add custom messages for validation rules, you can override the messages method in the form request. So let's go below and add this messages function. And you return the array with the custom messages. So for name.required, let's say we want to show please enter your full name. And this is how you do it. Now if you want to sanitize any data, meaning if you want to update some attribute value in the request before the validation, you can use the prepare for validation method. So let's say there is some float value you are receiving and you want to restrict the number of digits after the decimal point. You can do that in this method and then validate it. So you override this method prepare for validation and inside you can update the value. So I'm just receiving the price and I'm rounding it off to two decimal places. Talking about prepare for validation, there is also an after hook, which you can use after validating the request. So let's say if there is something you want to validate after the request, you can use this validator method. And that also brings us to the end of this video. I think now you got the idea why you should be using form requests instead of validating the request in the controller. If there is any topic in Laravel you want me to make a video on, let me know in the comment section below. And also, don't forget to like the video if it was helpful and subscribe to the channel because that means a lot. Thank you for watching this one and I will see you in the next video.